What up my MMA homies? That's right, I'm back again bitches. Every time I think I've gotten out, like a funk scramble, Ben Askren pulls me back in. Times have been rough, with my Instagram getting ethered, and the UFC deciding to drill takedowns on my channel again. Nonetheless, when a troll battle for the ages, is about to take place this weekend, it's time to dust off the old video editor. That's right folks, these two have been mean tweeting each other for months, and the bad blood runs very deep. Do you think he, he has a problem with you specifically? A absolutely. I don't, I met him a long time ago. I don't like him, man. There's not too many people that I genuinely dislike. He's one of them. I, I can't really pinpoint something I did or something. I mean, the one thing he points to is the fact that I said I whooped him in a training session, in which he kind of admitted it was true. After I dumped him on his head, we kept wrestling. He outscrambled me, and he said, yeah, you beat me wrestling. What, we were straight wrestling two-time national champion you're proud of that you're telling people that you know that's just fucking training i don't give a fuck about that i already forgot about that but there's some people they violate that man code mm -hmm. of, of gym this beef goes beyond making fun of each other's appearance on twitter though he's a specialist at putting his face in other men's crotch that's what he excels at he got his doctor in that you know disagreements between them go into more fundamental issues like for example who really invented the mma three-piece uh, this three-piece and soda thing, you felt like that was that was a good line or thing where he didn't know what he was saying. Jorge Masvidal is widely seen as its original creator. And you're not going to get a hit off me, you know, so I had to give him the three-piece with the soda and then just glide out of there. But is this really the case? Check out this two-year-old soundbite by Ben Askren. Right, he does this like, it's kind of like a three-piece series. It's kind of like a three-piece series between the single leg the half guard sweep and then he does kind of like this underhook push him into the fence type of deal. Indeed, meme stealing is a grave offense in the online world, and wars have been waged for less. So this weekend, many scores will be settled. Who has the best hair? Who makes the better pimp? And most importantly, who wins in a cage fight? The way the odds look, the bookies have Askarin as quite a large favorite, and given this matchup can broadly be described as grappler versus striker, who can blame them? Indeed, it is very tempting to imagine, this goes the way a typical Ben Askarin fight goes. Namely, Ben gets the takedown, and proceeds to break the opponent down from the turtle position. The rest of the round, is Ben laying a beat down from a riding position. The opponent might make a few valiant attempts to get out of the ride, but Ben gets the opponent down again, using his vast array of mat returns. The opponent is back to square one, and steadily gets demoralized. In between this master class of folk style awesomeness, some embarrassing BJJ will be on display. Like awkward guard passing, followed by getting swept because you didn't post in time. Or failing to finish a choke on an opponent you have complete dominant position on. That's right Ben, stick to the folk style playbook, and beat them to a pulp first before your choke. Bizarrely, in what could be strategic pre-fight disinformation. Jorge appears to think Ben's grappling skill set is similar to Damian Maya's. I've had better submission guys on my back for a long period of time. and I don't respect Ben's submission game. Not, he's not Damian Maya. So if we do hit the ground, I'm going to scramble right back up to my feet, get in his face, and continue to go to work on him. Despite Ben's BJJ issues, though, it's bad MMA math to conclude Jorge will fare better when grappling Ben than he did on the ground against Damian Maya. In that fight, Jorge stalled Maya for extended periods even though he conceded back control to Maya. I have already studied this fight, so do check that video out for the details. Jorge might have better BJJ than Ben, but as you should know by now, Ben's a totally different kind of grappler. Ben is not going to waste time hunting for hooks, and getting so-called BJJ dominant back control. He's going to start punching right away. Here you can see Ben actually taking out his hook, to settle into a crossbody ride. The opponent has to devote hands to posting to stop himself from being broken down, leaving Ben free to start punishing you. Next. In this sequence, you can see Ben kicking the opponent out from back control, where he can potentially be stalled by hand fighting. He traps the opponent in a ride instead. Now with the opponent's hands occupied posting, Ben is again left free to strike. As watchers of my Ben Asker and folk style studies know, Ben will not get loaded on the opponent's hips chasing hooks. He will dismount to get mad returns where he can look for rides again. In an ironic twist of fate, BJJ, could also end up being Jorge's downfall. Listen to what Ben has to say about Jorge's wrestling. 
His wrestling is good, but there's no way he can jump from this level all the way to this level in 13 weeks. It's just not doable. You know what? A lot of guys who grow up striking and then convert to wrestling, for whatever reason, they, they kind of lack that power necessary to stop the, the stronger attacks. For example, here in his early non-UFC fights, he clings on to the headlock as the opponent slowly consolidates and lifts his heels. To be fair, this tactic can be useful. Here he goes for the guillotine, and concedes the takedown against Lawrence Larkin. Nonetheless, he manages to sweep out, to get a nice reversal. Here, the threat of the guillotine, is enough to make Raging Al disengage, and give up on the takedown. This guillotine tendency, haunted him more recently against Maya. In round 1, he went for the choke against Maya's single, and conceded the takedown. Again in round 2, he went for an anaconda while Maya had his legs, eventually losing the hold, and conceded top position. Going broader, this guillotine strategy is tied to Jorge's larger philosophy on wrestling in MMA. Namely, he does what he calls, MMA scrambling. There's definitely a, a huge difference in between like actual mat, mat wrestling and in wrestling for, for a fight. I mean, yeah. you can scramble. And I can scramble too in MMA. Especially when you're adding the elbows and knees and working the body, especially in wrestling. They're not used to that shit. Mm -hmm. It's not a collegiate match, you know, and there's also strikes involved. And he also, every time he touches my leg, he's gonna have to pay me. I wanna use these, 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 and then the fucking, the rushing, you know. In addition to guillotines, Jorge favors using strikes to defend wrestling looking to create openings to escape or reverse. This approach, can yield decent results. There is no free lunch though. And devoting your hands to strikes and guillotines, means foregoing several fundamental wrestling defenses. Once he is in on your legs, or a clinch, harassing Ben with punches or guillotines, is typically not going to deter him, from finishing the takedown, or at the least, improving his position. Not hand fighting against Ben Askarin is very dangerous. He is constantly looking to lock hands around you to chain takedowns. Askarin has brutish strength, especially once his hands are connected. And he can finish takedowns that seem impossible, by his skillful use of grip chaining as he steadily improves position. Robbie Lawler has a powerful sprawl and was fresh in round 1, but even that, wasn't enough, to break Ben's grip around his hips. As long as Ben can lock hands around you, he is free to improvise till he gets a takedown. Rather than prioritizing strikes, and looking to punish Ben, Jorge might be better served, getting under hooks early, to create space, so that he can escape. Going for Askarin's hands, to frustrate his grip switching, and denying body locks, a skill Jorge has displayed in the past, might be the better strategy. Waiting till Ben is deep on his legs or hips to start defending via strikes or a guillotine seems very risky. But enough about throwing Jorge under the bus. Everyone and his grandmother knows Jorge's path to victory. What are you expecting him to do? His game plan is jab, stay away, and try to land a big uppercut or knee. I'm sure that's his game plan. That's, but that's everyone's game plan, right? But I'm not, I'm not going to let him touch me. I'm going to beat the shit out of Ben, man. Accordingly, Ben seems to be preparing for Jorge's circling. My training camp has been... More making sure I'm moving my feet, cutting off, uh, putting pressure on, that kind of stuff. Or his rebuttal to this. You're expecting him to come out and close distance straight away. Do you do you start defensively? Nah, I just I just go, man. You know, just get in there, look across the cage, and whatever emotions come out of me, I just I just let it rip. You know. Jorge is also vague as to his coach's game plan for Ben. My coaches have done the research on that, and so that's what we're going to try to stop is uh, for him not to sniff my crotch the whole fight, you know? Notwithstanding Jorge's cavalier pre-fight talk, it is a mistake to assume he is underestimating Ben. Jorge can fight from both stances, throws the full array of punches and kicks, and has knockout power. More importantly though, he has good fight IQ, and will adapt his tactics mid-fight. For example, in the Dare and Till fight. Once Jorge realized a particular combination was landing, he doubled down, and kept going for the same right overhand, left hook combo, eventually connecting clean for the knockout. Same thing against Cowboy. Jorge starts as a jabber, as he probes Cowboy's guard. Soon he starts to realize Cowboy is leaning back, rather than retreating, and Jorge starts setting up his right. Using either a jab or a kick to set up his right, Jorge eventually finds a home for his right hand. Even when he loses, Jorge still manages to display fight IQ. 
As mentioned in my Maya Masvidal post-fight study, by round three, Jorge had seen through Maya's feints, and was no longer backing up to the cage. Jorge also seems to have taken some grappling lessons from the fight, which might be useful against Ben. So much I learned from that Damian Maya fight. I engaged Maya when I was like completely breaking away and he would drop half guard and I would go in for the kill, you know. They won't be repeated on Saturday. Against Stephen Thompson, again while he lost, by round three, Jorge was again showing his ability to adapt. The first two rounds, Jorge was having problems getting into range, and was getting countered every time he threw. By round three, he was finally starting to solve the problem, by taking a high guard and encouraging Wonderboy to strike first. Here you can see, Jorge walks in with his high guard, now as Thompson loads to throw first, Jorge uses the opening to throw his counter. Jorge barely threw strikes in the first two rounds. But in round three, walking down Wonderboy with his high guard, he was at least able to start exchanges, and land counters when Wonderboy struck first. I highly doubt Jorge plans to throw big strikes at Ben, hoping to put him out with a big shot, at least early on. From past fights, it seems pretty obvious that low kicks and jabs, coupled with early framing, to control the range, seems like a good opening strategy against Ben. Believing you can punch your way out of Ben's clinch, seems foolhardy. Jorge can jab off the back foot, and he also has a good left hook. He will be able to use check hooks to catch Ben when he lunges in, or while he is pivoting out to avoid takedowns. It's pretty clear, what Ben Askarin is bringing into the cage this weekend. But the question is what version of Jorge is showing up? Is it the version that is looking to punish Ben constantly, even at the cost of his wrestling defense? Or is Jorge just trolling? And he plans to patiently pick Ben apart from a distance, chipping away, till the right opening to throw bombs presents itself. Jorge needs time, to choose the right strike to put Ben away, but he can't if he recklessly concedes a takedown early. Alrighty, that's all for this study folks. Do let me know who you think wins this weekend and how they do it. Take care all. Can he get a hold of you? He's going to get a hold of these fucking nuts, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we shouldn't be talking about what happens in practice. I've worked out with you twice. I don't really know you. And I wanted to pick a fight with you. So I knew that was maybe going to make you upset, and I brought it up to try to give some backstory to why I want to pick the fight with you, and it worked.